One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Dixie, Mississippi. What? Oh. Hey, Pod Squad! Welcome back. I'm Diksha, third-year podiatric medical student. And if you watched my last video on my experiences during our general surgery rotation, you'll know I've been waiting to release this video, which is about tips and tricks, just plain advice on how to handle the general surgery rotation. There's a lot of stuff that no matter how much I'll tell you right now, probably not gonna get until you're there yourself, but I'll do my best to help prepare all of you. First things first, you want to make sure you get to the OR before the first cases, okay? So I'm not sure if it's like this everywhere. For us at the hospital that we were at, we had to get there by 7.30 because the cases start at 7.30. Now what I mean by that is we had to make sure that we got there by seven. Why? Because you have to put your scrubs on. We, there's this really cool machine in the locker rooms. It's a really cool dispensing machine that you get your scrubs from. And these are fresh clean scrubs and they have your size ready, at least at the hospital that we were at. <laughs> you get your own locker, you choose a locker, throw in your stuff. And if I were you, uh, I would do my best to probably not even take my phone. I know people do. There were times where I had my flashlight turn on while I was in the surgery. You might not want that. You can come back in, come out whenever you want between surgeries. So just leave all of your belongings in the locker and you're changing into these scrubs and you want to get a bouffant on. Now, I learned later on that there are some surgeries that require heavy duty sterility gear. So that's why I just started doing as much as I could to prepare myself. So what I would do was I'd wear a bouffant first to take all my hair and put it in the back after I tied my hair back. And then I put on a dark blue hood on top of that. And I would tie it tightly so that it would cover my bouffant. My bouffant would still show, right? But I'd pull my bouffant underneath so that it covered all of my sideburns and any baby hairs that were sticking out. And then I put the blue hood over. Some nurses suggested that you could take hairspray or gel or something and just gel your hair down. And that helps a lot to make sure you're, you're really maintaining sterility. You also want to ensure that you have your mask. Now this is a little iffy. I, I really struggled with this because during the time of COVID, it's hard to remember that Yes, you're wearing a mask outside and you might just want to walk straight into the OR room with that old mask. Don't do that because of course you're breaking sterility already at that point. You want to put on a fresh new mask for the OR and their specific masks, right? Surgical grade masks. I really like the ones that had the the ones that had the face shield attached because that Give, that was just two in one. Otherwise, if you just have the other masks that attach in this area of your lower face, then you can have goggles that you could place on top. And then before you scrub down, you want to roll up your sleeves because if you don't do that, then there's a chance that while you're washing yourself, the sleeves will come down and you will just recontaminate yourself at that point, right? You want to do that first and foremost before you go to the sink and you wash your hands. Now, when you're actually scrubbing, you want to get some sort of solution in the package that they have ready for you, okay? So once you open it, you have nail picks ready. So you pick through your nails because a lot of material could have just collected up in your nails that you may have not even known about, right? You want to do that. Oh, and now that we're on nails, I just wanted to just want to point out, make sure your nails are short. What I have right now is probably not appropriate, even though it looks short to you. They're short enough so that when you put your gloves on, there's no chance that you'll rip through. So after you've picked out your nails, you use the sponge and you wet it and you activate it. So you want to clean your hands, each surface of your fingers and your palms and the back of your hand dorsally. You want to scrub those for 10 seconds each. So by that, I mean 10 seconds medially, 10 seconds laterally, and then you do that for each finger. And then you do that with your entire hand. Do that with the rough side of the sponge and then 
for the spongy part, you wipe down your, you scrub down your, uh, the, your hand dorsally because dorsally your hand is more sensitive. You do the same upwards, 10 seconds for each surface, each side, up to your elbow. Again, make sure your sleeve was not in the way in this entire process or else you've contaminated yourself. Once you're done, you then go ahead and you do a kind of swimming type of technique to ensure that you're rinsing off all of the solution. And each time you're doing it, you make sure your arm and your hand are not dropping down. The water from here can drop downwards and contaminate yourself. You do that about three times. Say you're scrubbing in immediately right after that. You go up and you get your hand towels with your hand, your arms still in this position. Get your hand towels out. And after you've scrubbed, this is what I was told. You want to ensure that your arms are not exactly 180 degrees, but not 90 degrees either, but in between so that there's no creases in between. So you're drying, you're drying, you're drying, you're drying, you're drying. You do that distally to approximately. After you're done drying and you're walking into the room, you push the door open with your back. So again, you're not touching anything. You want to make sure the entire staff knows even though you're well aware you're clean, you want to exaggerate every move to make sure they see that you are confident and you know what you're doing. That's what uh, one of the nurses had explained to us because he was saying, you might know you've done everything and you've taken every measure, but you want everyone to see that you know. At this point, you go up to the scrub tech and you avoid everything that's blue around you. Everything that's blue around you is sterile. So you do your best to stay at least a foot to two feet, even three feet is good. I, I mean, let's be honest, if we're all new here, right? So you want to show them that you do respect that everyone's nervous that you're in the room now. You go straight up and stay far enough away from the scrub tech, but show them that you're ready. And before this point, you should have already given them your, scrub, your gloves. You want a blue one and a white one. It might not be the same exact colors. What you want to do is you want to make sure that they're half a size apart. So for this example, seven, seven and a half. So you want to wear the larger size underneath so that the smaller size that you're wearing on top compresses the glove underneath. And the reason why you want to wear the darker color underneath and the lighter color on top is so that you can see if anything gets inside your gloves because if it does that point again broken sterility and you want to replace the gloves at that point you want to start off in this position and you walk up your thumbs towards the end okay but you want to have your wrist touching and everything touching and you slowly open this okay you're opening it towards the scrub tech and you wait for the scrub tech to take it okay once they've taken it they've held on to it you let go completely another technique depending on what they want you to do is you take it and someone had taught this to me and you're opening it this way and you kind of flick with this hand okay you flick it with this hand so that it lands on their sterile field which again you're far enough away that you really do have to flick it far, okay? You, you shouldn't be this close to the table. You should probably look up how to put on gloves because I can't really show you right now, but they'll normally help you with that. When, when um, a good technique for how to put your gloves on is you put in your hand this way, you're dipping like you're holding something in your hands, you dip through and once your fingers are through, you spread them out. You're probably gonna mess up quite a few times in the beginning and that's fine. They understand you're new to this. And then whenever you're going for the next glove, make sure you're helping the scrub tech by holding the, uh, holding the glove on the bottom of that, if you understand what I'm saying. Hold the outside layer of the glove and pull it out to help, help them help you put your other hand in. Before you even put the gloves on, you want to put your gown on. Your gown should be your size. So since I'm a little shorter, I'm 5'2", I went for the large size. The way you do it is kind of like, kind of like you have your arms in 90 degree position, put your arms in in this fashion, okay? You don't want to dip down because here's a secret, okay? Maybe not that big of a secret, but pretty much between your clavicle and your belly button, this area is sterile, only this area. You don't want to go anywhere outside of this area when once you're in the OR room. You pull out this way, okay? And then you try to wiggle your fingers around to get the white portion down. If it doesn't go down, you don't reach out and do it yourself. You just have your arms out and the scrub tech will help you pull them down. And then after that, 
someone who has not yet scrubbed down themselves and are still not sterile, they will tie you from the back because guess what? You're not sterile You're on your, in your back. Your back's not sterile. So there's a Velcro in the back that they'll help stick together for you and they'll tie you below. And then, then after that, you'll turn around and they'll hold. There's, um, there's going to be a color, okay? It's going to be like around your waist there will be two ties, okay? You take the tie on your left and you pull it out and then you hold the tab with the thread on this side, the side that's closer to you because there's gonna be two colors on there. You hold the side that's closer to you. The person who's helping you will hold it from the other side and then you turn clockwise and they'll rip out the card after you've turned clockwise and this entire time you're holding on to the string that's on your left. Okay, don't drop that because once you drop that, you have to do this entire process again and it sucks. You have that and you're holding on to it and then you tie yourself. Keep your arms however you want, but the best, probably the best way is we, we were taught maybe something like this or you can hold your scrubs like this. You can just, my favorite is really just the wrist. You go directly to the OR table. You help out with, uh, with draping at that point if you're able to. I know in the beginning, I, I don't think I helped with draping too much in the beginning. It's because I didn't know what I was doing, but you'll learn just by observing. The more you observe, you'll learn over time. But every case needs a different kind of drape and you'll figure out how to navigate that. And during this entire time, you might need a stool. And if you need a stool, get that ready before you even scrub in. Or you could ask a nurse to get you a stool. Once you're actually the, there and the procedure has begun, make sure you're sticking to the table like glue, okay? Don't move anywhere else, whatever you do. Say a tool is slipping, don't reach for the tool. If you reach for the tool, it's over. You have to go out and scrub in again. Don't do it you will bother everyone. And if someone's saying to retract, always watch, always watch about what's going on and so that you could, you could work on the spot immediately, okay? If someone's saying retract, immediately start retracting. If someone's saying to suture, suture. Hand ties, hand tie. Just have everything ready in your head and go over it beforehand. That's why you also want to practice outside of the cases. If you have something like this that our school gave us, Practice your suturing, okay? And maybe we'll link some things below, some uh, videos of the common procedures that you're told to do. That's something you wanna know. And you also wanna practice your hand ties. So that means single hand ties, double hand ties. Um, you wanna practice both of those at home as well. Know that when you're doing hand ties, yes, you can first start off with those thicker, thicker like friendship bracelet type of strings, but those will be a lot easier than practicing with gloves and small, small suture type material, okay? Because that's more accurate to the real thing. It's gonna be a lot different and you want to be able to show the surgeons that you know what you're doing so that they'll give you more tasks to do. A huge, huge, huge task they'll expect you to do during a lot of these procedures other than retracting is they expect you to suction. So whenever you see blood coming out or anything of, of the, the area that they're working on, have the suction ready and you'll impress them. <laughs> have the suction ready and suction up the blood as much as you can. And also if there's, um, if they're using a bovi and you see the smoke coming up, you can also lightly have the, have the suction kind of waving over the area that they're working on in their workspace, but not right in front of the surgeon's eyes so they can't even see anything, right? You wanna make sure you're to the side, but getting all that extra smoke so no one's inhaling it, it's not getting in anyone's way. Those are the two biggest things that you'll probably be doing during this time. You, want, you also wanna help with lap sponges. So if you see they're suturing and your job is to snip, you want to dab the areas with the lap sponges as much as you can. When you help them cut towards the end with the sutures, you want to cut towards the tip of the scissors, okay? So say the threads, the sutures right here, you want to cut like this. Not like this, but like this. But that's the best way to do it. And when you're snipping, you snip at a slight angle. So you go all the way down. If they said you have to snip towards the knot, the bottom, you go all the way down to the bottom and then you angle your scissors and you snip. Other important things that you want to watch out for when, um, these are just tiny things, but say you have your name tag 
Okay, if you have your name tag here, for example, I have a pocket here, so I like to put my name tag here. When you're going into the, um, into the OR, make sure you place it into the pocket out of the way. Say you have your gown on and you're working on something in the, on the sterile field, say it pops out. Just if it might pop out and somehow fall out of your gown, sounds impossible, but I don't know. They just say that you want to have it tucked away just in case. For your ties and your pants, just tuck that away as well so none of that is sticking out. If you ever want to shift around the OR table, remember that your back isn't sterile, right? So say the surgeon wanted to switch spots with you. You would go around like this. So if that makes any sense, basically you're rolling off their back, okay? Your backs are rolling off each other. Another random tidbit that I wanted to talk about is make sure you're always helping the nurses with whatever they need. You wanna be one of the first people that is in the room and one of the last people that's in the room. So even after the surgeon's left after the procedure, you should be there with warm blankets ready for the patient. You should be there to help move the patient. You should help them remove anything that's on the patient, maybe put back their socks on, anything like that. Maybe even bring the gurney over if the gurney has, hasn't been brought over by the nurses yet. Those little things make a huge difference. And then also before any of the surgeries, for example, you're interested in one surgery that you saw on the board, then you go over to the PACU and you're waiting, right? You're waiting for the surgeon. Once you see the surgeon, you have to, first of all, introduce yourself and tell them, for example, for podiatry, I'm a third year podiatric medical student. I'm Diksha. And then I would ask, okay, so am I allowed to observe or am I allowed to scrub in? Make sure you ask specifically one or the other because those are two different things and That'll help you because, you know, they make the calls, so you just want to follow protocol. Yeah, so I'm sorry that you had to sit through all of that. I know it was long, but I wanted to make sure that you all are getting off to a better start than I did when we were in our rotation. I wish I had something like this out there. And so I wanted to give back because I had a really nice resident who guided us through all of this as much as she could when she saw what was going on. So I hope the best for all of you and please stay tuned because we'll have some other great and hopefully shorter videos out for you, but still detailed. Wait a second, I have a few more things I wanted to say and I just remembered because this is our last day at the OR and let me pop some quick tips. So first of all, make sure that when you walk into the room, First thing you do before you even scrub down or anything is after you put your name on the board and everything and the surgeons and all the more important people are coming around and putting on their gowns and their gloves, you need to help. You need to tie their tops. There's going to be Velcro on the back. Tie, uh, put the Velcro on and then tie them below on the back. Also, you want to, after every surgery, switch out your masks because it's no longer sterile after that one surgery. Make sure, once again, put your name on the board. All right, so make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you can be informed about the next videos. Make sure to share so that you can share all this information and get to as many people as possible, right? And we'll see you next time. Pod Squad, signing out.